Good day to you guys, CG Patrick here again. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this particle beam effects using only procedural texture and some basic modeling. First, we are going to create this model right here. Using few modifiers, we are going to turn that into something like this. And after that, we are going to automate our beam using a wave modifier. And of course, we are going to apply some basic node set up to achieve this particle effect. A quick note though, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm assuming that you already know how to use Blender. So without further ado, let's just start the tutorial. So first thing in our modeling section, I'm just gonna delete everything and add in our plane. And then I'm just gonna tab into edit mode, right click to that to subdivide it by one. And then let's just delete these faces right here. And from here, I'm just gonna model this into this shape nothing really complex you can come up with your own design if you want to and then from here i'm just gonna add in more details by beveling it and add in some edge loop and duplicating faces so let's go ahead and do that So after a few modeling tricks, I just came up with this kind of design. Nothing really complex, just a basic modeling skills applied. Now next, let's just go and apply three different material to this object. So first, let's just go here in our viewport shading here. And let's set our render settings. So go here in render property tab. Let's enable our ambient occlusion. Then set the distance to 1. And the factor to 3. And let's just enable the bloom. Screen space reflection. And under color management here, let's change the look to very high contrast. Okay. Now go here in our material tab. I'm just going to click this plus icon right here three times to create three materials. And now the first one will be our base material and I'm just gonna change the color to dark gray like this and set the metallic to 0.6 and the roughness to 0.3 okay the second one will be the same but a bit brighter gray like this and set the metallic to the same settings 0.6 and then roughness to 0.3 and the last one will be just an emission shader. Okay. And I'm going to set this to 5 and change the color to something blue like that. Now I'm just going to select the areas or faces that I think it's a good part where we can add separation to it. So I'm just going to select parts manually like this. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click this material right here. And then click assign and okay that's looking fine i'm just gonna continue applying materials to specific parts that i want so i'm just gonna speed up the video from here now after a few i came up with this kind of look of course you can came up with your own design now next step let's finally apply our modifiers to this one so go here in our modifiers tab here and first modifier that we are going to use is the mirror modifier and then just check the clipping here and next modifier will be subsurf modifier and then let's switch this to simple and the viewport subdivision to two Next will be the array modifier and then let's check the merge and let's set the count to 9. Okay, looking good so far. Now the last modifier will be the simple deform. Now it looks like this because by default it is set to twist. We don't want that so let's change this to bend and then let's set the axis to Z. And then if you turn the angle here, it will deform like this. So let's just set this all the way to 360. 
and there you go and just like that we turn our simple object to something complex like this how cool is that right simple modeling skills and some modifiers and now we have this looking so pro right now so next let's head over to creating our main beam which is driven by procedural texture but for now let's center this object first so let's go in top view here select that and let's just eyeball it to center like this you don't need to be precise and then i'm just gonna hide this for now and i'm going to create a circle here and then tab into edit mode and i'm just gonna drag this down and extrude it all the way here and then let's add an edge loop there okay that's fine now now it's a perfect time to add in our modifier the first modifier that we are going to use is the subsurf modifier and then change the viewport to 2 and next modifier will be wave modifier so if we hit play this is what we got because by default the wave is moving in this direction but we want it to actually move like this so the way we do that is to change our transform direction so if you go here where it says option let's enable origin by doing that we can now change the direction of transform in this case i want it to rotate along x by 90 and now if we hit play it will move like this this is what we actually want now let's just turn on the normals here and then in the offset i change that to negative 50 and then the settings here you can change that to whatever you want but in this tutorial i'm just gonna leave it simple like this so next i'm just gonna switch in the shading tab here and then let's switch this to rendered mode and then let's create new material to that and then i'm just gonna rename this to beam now i'm just gonna delete the principal bsdf here and then let's add in the following node the first one will be mix shader then plug this into the surface next will be transparent psdf and an emission shader the transparent will be on the top and the emission will be in the bottom and i'm just gonna set this to blue like this and the strength to about 10 the next set of node will be color ramp node a noise texture and if you have node wrangler enabled just control t to that to bring in our mapping node and then in the texture coordinate here i'm just gonna switch this to object and then let's connect the noise texture to ramp factor and the color ramp to mix factor and let's grab this black handle to the center like that and then let's turn the noise to 0.5 okay and the detail all the way to 16 distortion to about 2 and press n in the keyboard and let's change the blend mode to alpha blend and the shadow mode to none okay now let's animate the location here in this case i want it to move in the y axis so in the frame one here let's set a keyframe here by hovering over the mouse cursor here and pressing i that will insert a keyframe to that and then move over here in the frame 250 and let's drag this all the way to 100 and press I to that to insert keyframe and now if we hit play looking nice so far next I'm just gonna duplicate this shift D to duplicate and let's scale it along Z like this and of course let's duplicate the material here by clicking this little icon right here that will duplicate the material and in emission shader here I'm just gonna turn this into a brighter color and switch the strength to 20 like that now if we hit play okay looking good so far now i'm just gonna duplicate one more time this time this is going to be the outer part and let's scale it along z like this and of course let's duplicate the material as well don't forget to do that and let's change the color to something red like this maybe drag this all the way here and set the strength to all the way to 100 all right that's looking fine uh, now i'm just gonna tweak the wave modifier here to add a little bit of a variation to it so in the offset here i'm just gonna drag this all the way to 80 or 100 in the width 
I'm just going to narrow this down like 1. And then this narrowness, I'm going to set this to 0.5. Okay, that's looking fine now. Now let's enable our, our object here. So we see how it looks like. And I'm just going to add in a point light real quick. Drag this upward like this. And let's make it really bright. Like something 500. Set this to blue of course. And go here in our world tab. I'm just going to bring in an environment texture here. And then go here in our render settings and under film, I'm just going to turn on the transparent. That's looking fine. Let's go and play this. There you go. Now with this idea in mind, you can go crazy creative with the steps that I showed you. It's just a matter of experimenting. In this case, I just added a simple plane there. I made a camera, then tweak the existing settings that we just created. All you need now is just be creative. Try to put your own personality on it. So that's all about it guys. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learn a lot, achieve a lot. And thank you for my 200 subscriber. I officially reached that. If you are new here, please subscribe. I promise you, you will not regret this. I have a lot of tutorials coming. So if I were you, click that bell button so you get notified. So yeah, that's all for now. See you in my next video. Bye.